All right, well, welcome to the Casey Catch-Up with Maui to Molokai, SUP foil downwind winner. Came to wild, mate. Well done, and thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's good to be back. Yeah. Um, look, everyone, actually, after our last podcast, uh, we spoke uh, to a few people and said, you didn't even ask him about his foils, like about his wings or anything. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's too much to talk about. We're frothing too yeah. much on all these different disciplines and downwinding. And it was, I remember it was a yeah. good chat. I'm looking forward to getting back to Maui, looking like next year at the moment. But um, yeah, I, I, I was so jealous um, when I saw the <laughs> M2M footage come out. And I'm like, damn it. You know, I should have just done it, but um, yeah, yeah, it was a pretty fun ride. Yeah, well, it always is, it, and it was funny. I spoke to you after the race, and like, congrats on winning, and how the conditions. Like, mm. oh, look, it was kind of light. Spoke to Julian Bradley <laughs> from WA. I'm like, oh, how was it, mate? He goes, it was the best conditions ever, best race <laughs> ever done, the biggest bumps, all this. And I was like, oh my god, Kane said it was flat. I'm oh, not flat, but not windy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just the the <laughs> Aussie. The end was the end was crazy. Yeah. Okay. The last third of the run was, was like, yeah, like all time, like, you know, good head high, super steep bumps, Yeah. but like the middle of the channel, there, there are some times I struggled to stay out for sure. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. I will we'll, yeah, yeah. give us a rundown. Cause really, I guess what I wanted to know, and I think a lot of other people that are into the sup downwind stuff, sup downwind foil stuff is, you know, what's the race like? Um, I've done it plenty of times on a stand up, but not in a foil. Yeah. Um, I spoke to you about the start and maybe just, yeah, mm-hmm. kick us off and, Maybe even your thoughts about what foil you were thinking of using, conditions pending, yep. and and obviously talk about the foil because you you won on a foil yeah. that you designed, which is epic, so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you should be proud of that and definitely share it with everyone. Super so everyone knows. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, basic rundown of the event is it was kind of it was kind of spontaneous a little bit. I knew it was coming up for a long time, and wasn't really planning on do it doing it. I've never done a crossing before. Yeah. And was a little nervous about going that long with no support boat and no experience and was like unsure I guess yeah and uh the day before the race is supposed to happen I called up a few friends and like talked to them about it and you know kind of started considering it like well what do I need you know how long is the run should I do it who else is doing it without a support boat yeah. And uh, at like, well, it must have been two or three o'clock p.m. I made the call, like, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> so, register. There was a, there was a meeting at um, it must have been two o'clock. I made the call. There was a meeting uh, at at four. Yeah. Like a pre race meeting. Yeah. And so, like, raced down to the store, got an EPIRB, raced back up, went to the meeting, <laughs> and it was like, all right, I'm in Let's do it. tomorrow Let's morning. Do it. Yeah. Um. And I'm like the present, <laughs> just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, well, what's what's the worst that can happen, right? I have an EPIRB, I'll, I'll probably live. Yeah. Um. So, went down there the next morning. No plan for getting back up, but I had a bunch of friends are, that are going, and there's yeah. boats, right? There's ways to get back up. Yeah. And so that's um, actually, I'll jump in there. Like, what you're saying is kind of so many people do that the first time they do Maori Molokai, guys. Yeah. Um, like guys from Australia fly over for that race. You're used to anyway on the stand ups. And mm-hmm. what you said just then, like, yeah, I just sort of rocked up and, you know, I didn't ever plan to get back, but there's people going back. So there's always room. But like yeah. so many times, like my first year, I was like that. Then you sort of learn, you learn like who the boat yeah, driver is totally. to help you back. And, but the first time, it's like into the unknown. You don't know where to go. Yeah. You don't know. So I've, really I've never been like, on Molokai before. Yeah. All that stuff. It was <laughs> totally new, like yeah. <laughs> super confusing. But um, yeah, uh, Andrea Muller, you know, let me put my, some of my stuff in her boat and give me a ride out to the start line. It's just amazing. Um, and I don't know, just went for it. Yeah. Talked to uh, Connor Baxter on the beach before, like, okay, like, how do I get there? Yes. Like, where do I, where do I point, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause you can look at it on the map all you want, but when you're there, it's like, oh my oh. God, like what angle do I take? You know, what does the wind do? And he's yeah. like, oh, I just point at the tip of the eye yeah <laughs> and so yeah i got up and did what he said pointed at the tip of the lanai yeah uh got a little nervous i was too far out so like it's like working it in working it in working it in I'm like a half hour in kind of got lost <laughs> easy to happen you know the, a lot of space the oceans there. the ocean's so big yeah. and you're in such like the view is so unfamiliar that yeah. you don't really know where you are mm. 
It's a so, yeah. Opened up Google Maps. I was like trying to while figure out where there. I was while you're out while there. I'm out there. Yeah, on but foil. there's no internet. <laughs> <laughs> so the map wasn't loading. I'm like, okay, well, I just keep going downwind. Yeah. Um, eventually it loaded, and I kind of like found my found myself and found my line. Yeah. Around Kamala Bui. Yeah. Yeah. And um. Yeah. Got a little light around Kamalo. Okay. Bumps were small. Yeah. And so I started working my way back out um, until the bumps got better. And mm -hmm. from there, just pointed it back in. Kind of a weird line. Yeah. Because I guess you um, said originally you were tip of Lanai usually sends you a little bit um, south, I guess. It usually would send yeah. you, you know, yeah. kind of too far and not missing, but you realize if you go at Lanai and then yeah. turn towards Molokai that you probably miss the best sort of bumps. <laughs> Whereas, so I, yeah, yeah, I ended up doing this kind of like W shape, yeah, where I like started off going straight and then like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get to Kamalo, I gotta get yeah. to Kamalo, too far in, go back, <laughs> back out. out, yeah, yeah. My um, my first year doing it, similar to you, I had no idea where to go. People just say, actually, the advice I got at the briefing was, you can't miss it. There's a wharf at the end. Like you'll see the wharf, <laughs> you'll see the house. Um, yeah. And I was so paranoid of missing it. I paddled like so far north that i yeah. had to come out around come alone no way <laughs> yeah i was and it was it was a oh cloudy God. rainy year so the wind was yeah. light and um the visibility was really bad so you couldn't see so like mm -hmm. i know exactly what you said like uh, i love yeah the, similar the google maps out in your phone to see where you were <laughs> we had a we had like a squally start mm. and that squall moved it down to kamala and so for a while kamala was like uh covered by rain yeah i was like where is the point yeah. Where am I even pointing? So, so, who, so um, but yeah, managed to yeah managed to make it. Yeah, and and win it for for the for the sap foil. Um, yeah. Let's talk about who else was in it. I know Zane won the wing. Um, Alex mm -hmm. Aguera was in was winging as well. Um, yep. Obviously, you then were... there. Yeah. Uh, what's it? I forget his last name. Um, Eric. Yeah. Eric. Eric. Yeah. Sturman. Yeah. Um, he was he was there. Jack Ho was there. Uh. And then Simeon, Voyager mm -hmm. Foiler, was there. Yeah. Um, then it must have been Annie and Julian. Yeah. Um, and Andrea Miller. Yeah. So that was the foil crew. That's epic. Yeah. And there were a few more wingers, just kind of lo local guys from the beach, Mauricio and uh, yeah, John and John McCabe and whatever, a uh, hobby. Yeah. And those guys also kind of just sent it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so but that it was, was so cool. Was it, it sounds like a lot of the foilers, it was one of their first. Um, yeah channel crossings right yeah for yeah. sure sort of in a buzz yeah it was it was great yeah but um what was funny is we started an hour after all this the sup and, and the canoes right right so the whole time going down i'm, I'm expecting to pass everybody who went mm -hmm. i'm expecting to see all these people right yeah and i'm going down and i see i pass on the outside of like two boats right mm -hmm. And though the the people, I mean, the boats, it, it was it wasn't like the really fast OC1 guys or like Connor or it was just like slower people. Yeah. And so I keep looking ahead, like, where is everybody? Where is everybody? Yeah. And the whole time I'm like looking for these boats ahead of me. <laughs> and get, I, so I get I get to the bottom, I come in and Zane's standing on the dock, and I'm like, Zane, who else is here? And he's like, oh, just me. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah so you, i don't know where everybody went it's amazing how must... the channels you just like the lines that people take and everything gets so yeah. small out there i must have gone outside of everybody or something mm. i didn't see any but i barely saw anybody any boats not even and they would just wild before you didn't see the photo boat either the, the video or the no. photographer boat so you got no photos no video <laughs> just, just your gps <laughs> just went yeah you just, just a fun downwind teleported run. to the end <laughs> yeah and uh as far as as far as speed um i've been doing a lot of downwinding on that foil recently yeah with a lot of people and i i know i have good pace on that yeah. setup mm -hmm. and so all i focused on was like saving energy and not falling yep and i kind of assumed like okay if i'm saving energy then everybody else is saving energy too and all I can hope is that me saving energy is faster than them saving energy. Yeah. So I was just like trying to be super efficient the whole time. Yeah. It's, it's such a tricky one with like, I think as um, 
you know, down when fall races become sort of more and more popular. I kind mm. of see it as like the race is almost obviously, you know, you can't fall. That's the first one. You've got yeah. to get up at the start. That's yeah. the second one. Um, and, you know, they're the two, if you can get up at the start and then not fall yeah. throughout, they're the two. You're pretty things. fast. Yeah, you're quick. But then the things that are going to like, they'll become a point where everyone's getting up at the start and no one's falling yeah. during the run. And it's going to come down to yeah. the third thing, which is what foil are you using and how fast or slow can you go? And totally. the reason I say fast or slow is because it's almost, you know, if, if you fall once on a fall that's too fast, you're kind of better yeah. off being on the one that's slower. So it's yeah, totally. going to become totally. like, I kind of just got, it was a bit of like F1, you know, you need to have the right strategy, the right tires or foils. And, totally. And it's going to become really interesting, I think. And I'm stoked to see there's a bit of a crew doing M2M and um, I know you're I'm, going to Hood River as well. So yeah, um, really excited for that. Yeah. I'm picking up, I guess let's talk about the foils. Yeah. Um, so this is a foil I've been on for a while. It's one I CNC machined out of a block of solid carbon. Wow. Yeah. Um, similar to like the tail wings, but just carbon instead of fiberglass mm -hmm. and uh, fits on a sub foil Moses mass and fuse um, that I chose that because it's, it's easy to make front wings for. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, I can fit that connection in a, in a small uh, thickness of a panel. Yeah. But the front wing is, you know, somewhere around AR nine, 10, uh, I forget what the exact area is, but it's, it's between like eight twenty and eight fifty. Yep. Yeah. Um, nice. small. kind of like the eight, kind of like the eight ninety nine a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Size um, which. Yeah. yeah. Or Cabrina 800 are a little bigger than the Lift 120. Yeah. Um, um, let's talk about that just quickly because you talked about those. Um, to me, personally, like mm -hmm. I've, I've used Lift 120. I've used the, the ART 899 a fair bit. Um, yeah. And I found the 899 quicker than the 120 using okay. stock. Um, the 120 is obviously a smaller foil. But yeah. The foil section is what's well, got to be slower. So much more powerful. Yeah. 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 So it's like it, it's got a bit... It's got a better low end than the 899, even though it's a smaller foil. Um, yeah. Which, so, you know, for the listeners, explain, like a lot of people will just look at a foil and be like, okay, that's going to go this fast because it's this size. But, you know, yeah. you spoke about aspect ratio, nine to 10. You also totally. spoke about the size of it. And then I guess you're not, you're not going to say what foil section it is exactly, but like, can yeah. you describe the foil section? Um, it's hard to describe. Uh, yeah. It's... it's <laughs> A lot of the time I spend in front wings I guess. is on the foil section. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, it, as far as what the, the like the lift to drag curve of that foil, mm -hmm. it's like uh, it's like an eight ninety nine. It's real all really close to eight ninety nine uh -huh. from maybe twelve miles an hour and up. Yeah. And below that, it has a lower stall speed. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's and that's that's what you're explaining is like what we all want. Like you want a foil that can go yeah. fast, but can also go really yeah. slow. And it's like basically yeah. the, the bigger the range you have, the more likely mm -hmm. you are that you're going to have the right foil for race day. Totally. So that one, that one, I kind of got lucky with a little lucky with the size. It's like just big enough that I can, how do you explain it? When, you know, when you're going straight on a bump and your nose is high and you're just kind of like almost, almost stalling, stalling yeah. but just staying on that bump, I can just do that on a normal bump. Yeah. So I have enough room to go straight or to do tight turns. I'm not worried about the thing dropping out, mm -hmm. but it also has just enough speed to stay on those really big ones in yeah. the channel. Yeah. And, and um, the beauty of that is like when the conditions fire up, you're chasing. And then when the conditions are not, you can kind of yeah. stall and wait, which, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's the dream. And so what's interesting is like training with other people. I, I ride with a lot of lifts, lift 120s, Jack mm -hmm. and Annie and Julian and, um, so that's the foil I have the best reference to. Those guys are, it's just compared to that, it seems like they're really fast, as fast in heavy wind. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's blowing, if there's good bumps, like, yeah, I, I had to work to keep up with Annie. Um, but it seems like I have a bit of an advantage when it gets a little bit lighter. Yeah, okay. So when I have yeah. to slow down and I have to use that low end of the foil, yep. I have an advantage there. Well, have you um, used the lift 120 much? Not downwind. I've used it a lot winging and surfing. Yeah. So I've used it a little bit downwind and, and just with the stock tail. So not everyone says how mm -hmm. much better it is with your tails on it. But um, mm -hmm. with the stock stuff, what I found was it was, but like 
I guess it's glide ratio sort of speed is really fast, yeah. but below that, okay. it's kind of doggy. Like it, it, okay. it doesn't glide. Like when you get it to speed, it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't, it just wants to continue going. Like yeah. it keeps gliding like quick. Yeah. But if you're below that speed, you can keep it up. Yeah. But it's slower than I guess what it like should you be. Know how the, you know how the 1099, if you get it on small bumps, it'll kind of just carry you. Yeah. You keep an eye on the mass and it'll just like, keep yeah. you going yeah i want that i'm chasing yeah. that yeah but in a small in a smaller foil small foil yeah unfortunately um, it, it, and like you just mentioned like conditions play such a big part so when we're testing foils oh, it's yeah. like well that one felt really good but maybe, the, <laughs> maybe the conditions were really good or that one felt yeah. really bad but maybe conditions are really bad you know so yeah. it's, it takes especially in australia it takes time to figure out if it was a good foil or a good day or a yeah. bad foil or a bad day we're in Maui, mm -hmm. you have so many good days. It's probably like, <laughs> how do I find how this thing goes in no wind? Or, Bad or, conditions. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, another thing the day before I, I went to, I'd like crank all my bolts together to make sure they're all tight and like ready to go for the race. Yeah. Broke the head off one of my bolts on my uh, long mast. So it was stuck in there? It was stuck in there. And it, I've been using, I've have bro uh, stripped a couple bolts in that sob setup mm -hmm. so i went to harden bolt hardened steel bolts yeah and so i couldn't drill it out well so and i do? messed up the, messed up the mast <laughs> had to had to go to the, the short mast 72 all oh, right and it ended up paying off mm. that's I interesting I, I lost a little bit of time to glide i can't carry as much energy yeah because i have less height to work with yeah but the whole system was stiffer with the short mast yeah there's less total flex and that made it so much more comfortable on the yeah, long so, run. So I've played around with short and longer masks. And I was using a 72 a fair bit. Um, yeah. And um, I found using in, in lighter conditions in Sydney, we've lost a backwash. So it's pretty messy. Um, okay. Swell and, you know, rebound off the cliffs. Yeah. Um, so I find the 72, I was touching down with my board a fair bit mm -hmm. or or I was breaching and falling off a fair bit. Yeah. Whereas for me yeah. with the 82, I, to me, that was the perfect height because I could still kind of, you know, you, on a, to me on the 72 I, or 75, I guess it is, you can't turn as hard because yeah, you're more totally. likely to get the wingtip out. You got to be real careful. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. You got to sort of like just sort of straight line and safety foil. Yeah. Whereas on the 82, I can turn that a little bit harder. So I, I've gone back to the 82 um, mm -hmm. because I like to turn a bit when I'm downward and not just sort of straight line. I get to, yeah. to me in the channel, like explain, I guess obviously the extra stiffness was better, a little bit, um, so nice. a little bit less um, weight, I guess, in the entire setup is something that's got to help, I guess, especially yeah. when you're using a smaller, um, you know, it's 10 centimeters less mass. So that's mm -hmm. less, you know, material. So it's going to be a little bit lighter. But the um, biggest thing was the stiffness for sure. Yeah. yeah made okay. a big difference. Um, and one thing with the, the one quirk with those mass subfoil is they're like real thick. They're like 18 millimeters or something uh -huh. for most of the mast. Yeah. But then the in the last like six inches, it tapers to 14. So you've got to be right at the top. Yeah. So if it's it, it's like slow, 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 slow. And then if you're right at the top, it flies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th th that extra control from the stiffness made me a little more comfortable with holding it super high on the mast on yeah. big bumps gotcha. without without breaching or messing up too much. Yeah, very cool. Um, I want to get into your st the, the start of the race because to me, like you yeah. talked about before, there's sort of two things that sort of matter in a race at the moment. Yeah. It's getting going and then uh -huh. staying going. Not falling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so let's talk us through how was the start and who got up first? Um, um, the oh, man. The start was kind of a blur. They were all sitting in a group. Yeah. And you know, it's pretty low key. There was no start boat or anything. Yeah. Gentlemen's um, agreement. Yeah. We were kind of, we were kind of like side, side event. So everybody had like an official start boat with a horn and stuff. Yeah. And then they're like, well, you guys, they start the timer for you at 10. So just figure it out. Yeah. So we're like, <laughs> it's 10, it's 10. Let's go. Let's go. And nice. uh, I fell once off the start. As in like Probably you fell cost... off paddling or you. Yeah. Yeah. Like... I was grinding yeah. really hard and like caught the nose and fell. Yeah. probably cost 10 seconds or so yeah and then got up right away the second try mm -hmm. um i was i think i was right behind julian yeah like 10 10, 10 feet behind him uh -huh. just tracking him 
and then maybe a couple, minute or two later, we're all super spread apart. Yeah, it's crazy how it's it happened crazy really out. fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do, do you remember who was the first to get up? No. No. I guess no, Zane I and Zane, well, the wingers would have gone. Well, the wingers were already up. Yeah. Um, Jack was up super fast. Uh-huh. That's what I remember. Yeah. Um, but other than that, we weren't. Yeah. I mean, I, I was up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like um, if you, even if after a fall that you were still right behind Julian, who's, you know, no slouch. He's fast. Um, yeah. Um, I think a couple of people had, had some trouble. Um, Andrea, maybe Andrea and Annie. I know Annie had had a while out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and how were the bumps at the start? Like, because you said you started off on a little day. Um, mm-hmm. And there are bumps out there. It's definitely better than where the stops start, you know, on our yeah. Flemings. Um, but it's kind of pointless to start at Flemings on a foil <laughs> because it's yeah. like it's a. I thought, that, I thought they were pretty nice, but it was more d- deeper water bumps. So they were longer and not as steep. Yeah. The hardest um, to get up on, really. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe I got lucky or maybe, I don't know, I've been training a lot. Yeah. On flat water um so i got i didn't have much trouble um, mm-hmm. but you can definitely get stuck in those kind of bumps yeah and it's interesting like you said like it was a bit of a you know everyone just sort of sitting oh it's 10 o'clock let's go um i think yeah. <laughs> as, as races become more and more popular we're probably going to see like um like you said you sort of forced the first one and nosedived and then yeah. the second one you like oh, must have got lucky because it was easy and that's yeah i guess when i'm coaching crew it's like um I always tell them to wait for that easy one, obviously. Yeah. Um, but in a race situation, you can't really you gotta go. wait. You don't have time. Because the horn goes and it's like, oh, um, yeah. you know, I'm going uphill. I'm, but you just go. You just got to, you know, it's, yeah, it's all totally. precious time. Because, and like, if you're right next to me, you could be in the perfect spot. And I'm a meter away from you. I could be in the worst spot. And so totally. it's, it's um, a bit of a luck of the draw. You just have to grind yeah. and, and figure it out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Change your angles and grind and pump and, and don't, yeah, just don't try to lift too early like get the speed first totally then, yeah but it's um, yeah and I, I, I was happy that the bumps at the top really fit they were they were the, about the size and speed that my foil really liked mm-hmm. so i was grinding super hard at the start and then as soon as i'm up i could relax yeah for yeah, a couple minutes nice. yeah it's not which is really than, nice nothing worse than getting up and then you realize oh <laughs> these bumps are going too slow for this foil i gotta pump yeah. more yeah yeah um and i think one of the lessons for next year um is now that I know the run and know the conditions a little better, um, save less energy. Yeah. The whole yeah. time I spent like, man, I need to save my energy. I need to save my energy. Yeah. What if there's no wind at the bottom? Yeah. And I need to like, you know, grind a couple of miles. But it turned out it got even better at the bottom. Yeah. And so by the time I got in, like, I mean, I didn't make it all the way to the dock. I probably had to paddle, you know, a few hundred meters. Yeah. Um, but a half hour hour later i went back out winging because i had energy <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely like, oh, a sign man. that you we didn't go hard enough <laughs> yeah. i should have worked i should have worked harder yeah i want to go back i want to go wing wing some waves now i uh, really yeah so that's and that's it's probably less than two things one the distance it, it's really tricky on a fall because if conditions are good it's easy yeah. and if conditions yeah. are bad it's really hard <laughs> really you know? hard yeah so like I'm thinking from my SUP background, like what you did, like save something in the tank for the end. Totally yeah. makes sense. When I first yeah. did my first crossing, I exact opposite. I went way too hard and then the bumps got okay. better and it sort of took me home. And then the wind it went glassy, just like, you know, three or four oh Ks before the wharf. Um, yeah. And I paddled in, my feet were cramping and it was hard. But on, <laughs> on, a, on a stand-up, even an unlimited, it yeah. was at 42 Ks, 45 Ks is, mm-hmm. that's like four hours pretty much. Yeah. Whereas on yeah. a foil, 45, 40, whatever kilometers or uh, miles, um, yeah. it's, it's like if you're using, if you're going really conservative, it's two hours. And if you're going attacking, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, what, an hour and an hour 45, 45 or so? Yeah. yeah. Hour 50. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, um, it's a much shorter race on a foil as long totally. as the conditions are good. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It was actually funny. I, I guess I had a similar thing. The last one or 2K were pretty variable in. Mm. and so it would be really on for five minutes five or ten minutes and then really off yeah and so i came in in the really off wind okay. but since the bumps above were so good yeah it was like glassy bumps smooth rollers it's pretty yeah. sweet i know smooth exactly, rollers. exactly what i had and it was on a sup it was really hard to get under but on a foil yeah. you're already fine on a foil you're cruising it was yeah. like surf foiling it's like easier to read yeah yeah 
yeah it was nice yeah um and definitely want a bigger board i would have saved you know 10 seconds at the start with a bigger board mm -hmm. and i probably would have saved 30 seconds paddling yeah. at the end so, with a so, longer board so tell us about like so using a your own foil which is kind of a 899 a little bit smaller span by the sounds but yeah yeah but so that's the kind of size you're using and then um, mast using the Saab foil 72 centimeter, 72. which you, in hindsight yeah. you said was a perfect choice because the extra stiffness, was perfect. You, you could ride higher. Um, yeah. You, and then what board, uh, what, what, what tail were you using? And then what length fuse were you using? Because that's what people always want to know. Oh, I'm not sure. It was the Saab 700. It was kind of a long fuse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Probably did, like an axis short or something. Did you do that um, on purpose? No, it's just no, what it's I, just what it's it just how it comes. Yeah. Um, tail wing is a tail, tail I've been working on. Um, so I've, I've tried the boomerang. To, I've tried your boomerang yeah. tail just recently um, with the lift 120 doing flat water paddle. Okay. Well, it was the 170 actually on flat water starts. And mm -hmm. I've never thought I'd be able to paddle up the 170, yeah. let alone, you know, but with your tail wing, it made it so much easier. Sweet. Um, the boomerang was really good. Yeah, mine's, it's a bit like a, boomerang but i i tweaked it for better high speed stability yeah so refined performance so a little boomerang. bit a little bit refined i i like yeah yeah a little bit more of an all-rounder yeah um nice. and comfortable mm -hmm. comfortable yeah so really psyched on it yeah cool and you obviously um, that that's not released yet by the sounds of it no not yet <laughs> uh hopefully soon yeah well stay tuned yeah. too. kane's got a new new stay tailwind tuned. coming out <laughs> nice yeah um and then you telling and more and more and more of the front wing too that's that's yeah cool. i'm picking up some some new stuff in hood river to race Ooh. on all right well maybe i'll so, catch you after hood river too <laughs> mat, mast fuse thin mast all your should own be stuff? even fat all this my own stuff really nice um ah, the, i might i might be running a no limits mast for yep. the race uh -huh. um but it should be faster yeah, very <laughs> cool. And then, okay, let's. That's really exciting. So, I'll let's we'll have to try and line up another one after Hood River because. Um, yeah. Or well, actually, before we move on to that, let's. What what board were you using? You said you wanted to use something a little bit bigger, longer. Yeah, I was, I'm on a six zero by twenty four. Yeah, okay, nice. That's basically what I've been using for the last yeah two years, and I just changed to a six one by twenty two and a half, and. It's nice. What what are you, so what six by twenty four? Uh, what's the volume? It, it, I don't know. We didn't. It's yeah. kind of a hand semi. <laughs> it's like mix computer hand shape. Mm -hmm. We made some tweaks, so I don't really know what the volume is. Yeah, I guess ninety five to one hundred liters. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, and it's just teardrop, almost a flat bottom. It's like belly bottom. Yeah. Um, works good. Yeah. You know, low low swing weight. I've seen you so, paddle it up in the flat, so you know. Um, and obviously, yeah, you got up pretty quick in M two M and. It's yeah. obviously it working works, for you. Works good for the size. Mm. I can I, something like like Dave's new stuff <clears throat> at like eight o or six by twenty four, ninety five, one hundred liters, and you want to go a little bit longer for next time. Yeah, I definitely want to go longer, especially for that that paddle in. You know, when you, when when you stop pump, when you uh, lose your pump <laughs> at the end of the race, and uh, just getting on foil, you know, more consistent yeah um, a little bit easier and so i assume that you oh. didn't fall from the start that first fall until the finish where you came down off foil is that yeah yeah T definitely i was i was a little scared to fall so it's kind of channeling my my inner like prone down winder yeah like, yes. okay you just can't fall yeah. you cannot fall no matter what yeah um because it was light I mean, for me, it was light in the in the middle of the channel, and the bumps are so long. Yeah, I was like, shit, it could take me a really long time to get back up. Yeah, it's hard to find um, those good chipping. So it's just, yeah, it's just like save energy, like don't fall, don't make any mistakes. Yeah, um, yeah, it was it was really fun. Yeah, no, I was very jealous. Um, I want to, um, <laughs> I want to share some footage um, that I saw. From yeah. So here's a bit of footage from Maori Molokai. None of it is Kane because he just took the strangest line that no one could find him. <laughs> but here is, or here's Zane Westwood, uh, Zane Westwood, Zane, Zane Schweitzer 
winging, oh, yeah. and, and he was the first um, first person. It looks like he's also on a Saab foil. Um, yes. What do you know? What he was using? I think he's on a seven forty. Uh huh. So the seven forty Saab foil, and he was yeah. moving. Um, he was moving. He came in fifteen minutes before I did. Which is a that's a which lot. Is wild. Yeah, but um, yeah, wing yeah. foiling you can definitely go a lot quicker, especially. Um, it looks like he could have gone quicker oh too. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. There's keep. huge potential. Yeah. Uh, we're going to skip, and this is next to this will load um, Connor Baxter. Let's see. Mm -hmm. See how it loads. Yeah, we got Connor. This sort of shows the conditions pretty nicely. Um, yeah, this is this is probably the this is mostly I think below um, Kamala, or at least the Zin. This is on the Molokai side of the run. Yes, this is the I best think. bit. <laughs> yeah, end to end yeah. definitely gets better as you go. That the start generally can be sort of quartering a fair bit right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, and then when you yes, get here, it's super much. straight and far out. That's mm -hmm. that's fun. That's that's fun even really on a fun. 14 foot stand up. Um, imagine how much more fun it is on a foil. Um, yeah. I messaged Connor and said, you know, why aren't you on the unlimited? I didn't <laughs> I didn't uh, mention the foil, but I was like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's having a blast. He's a freak on a 14 footer too. The, the way he moves around he's on the ball. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. Yeah. Best in the he world. Trains so stuff. much. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Um, we'll be we were doing uh, flat water practice on uh at the harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh he he comes by, he's doing laps at the harbor. And I was on a uh, GoFoil 2200, GT 2200. Yeah. And he was keeping up with me pumping. Far out. He's while sprinting on his sub board. Yes. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. He's a serious athlete. And I, I missed uh, last race I did in Hawaii with him was Maui to Molokai, actually, um, on the Unlimiteds. Yeah. And we had an epic duel. Me, mm. Connor, and Travis all had a really good battle. Oh, wow. Um, and it was the first time that anyone beat Connor M to M. And I got second wow. and Travis got first. But we were literally, you could have thrown a blanket over us all. Um, and that's so cool. I want to get back and race. So it's hard. I want to do it all. I want to foil. I want to, right. I want to paddle and stand up too. <laughs> um, let's have a look. I don't want that one. And then there's this one of Jack. Eric. And there's another one oh, of Jack sweet. too. Yeah, he's Eric. And there's the, the mm -hmm. Malolo flying and then really kind of an arty shot. But he sort of shows you the bumps and he comes there. Yeah. And um, on the Kalama sort of Barracuda style board and with the 120 yeah. by the looks. Yeah, 120. Yeah. Uh, almost everyone was on the 120. Yeah. Andrea, Annie, Eric, Jack. We're all on the 120. Yeah, but the winner wasn't. <laughs> Which um and let's have a look at Jack's. This is this this to me Jack showed got the conditions. some really nice footage. Yeah. This to me showed the conditions pretty nicely. Um mm -hmm. looks less. Then you know, the, the the bumps that um Connor was in, you know, obviously yeah. it conditions change so much. Like not only where you are on the run, but also the time, the time that you as are. Well. Yeah. So it looks like the yeah. sup's almost got better conditions because as you said, Kane, it looks kind of light. I think there. so. And uh it got better through the day. So I I got a boat ride back the same day around uh four o'clock. Mm -hmm. And it was insane. The bumps were so good the whole way. Yeah. Um, so I think next year we should start a little bit later. Yeah, fully. We you should start how, at eleven instead of ten. How far? Um, how far back was Connor when you? Like, how long did he take to come I in? Can't after remember. You? I can't but you remember. beat him quite by a, a while. fair bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The there was one. Uh, there was a what was, what was that? Two men that was really close to me. Mm -hmm. um, I probably passed him in the last couple k yeah right um they were just way ahead of everybody else and people were questioning like did they start at the same time like what yeah. happened but i think they were just that fast yeah wow that's cool so that the two cool. mans and then i guess kind of being on the, the two mans fast. rather than the unlimited would yeah. have been slower than normal um, um maybe not maybe not for connor actually he's a freak on the 14 um, <laughs> yeah i can't remember when when he came in yeah um but pretty quick it'd be cool to see the far ahead of 
the rest. It'd be cool to see the list of everyone who um, competed in the times because you could almost create like a bit of a handicap, you know, for the totally. spoilers to try to, you know, have them have the best conditions. And I think probably an hour and a half, hour and a half or two, two hours. Yeah. Back, you'd arrive at about the same time. Yeah, that'd be cool too because then you, but, obviously um, lighter conditions, you'd be a bit slower, but it's kind of, um, yeah, makes it a race. There's a, there's huge potential. I'm excited for the next years. Yeah. Um, I think if it's, if it's really on at the top or through the middle, we're going to def, I, I think there's potential for sub, you know, hour 30 times in the next couple of years. Yeah. On that run. Especially considering so, you said you were sort of safety foiling most of the way, you know, and, and yeah. conserving energy. Yeah. And if, if it was good the whole way, um, yeah, there's a lot of time you could shave off for sure. Mm, for sure. Cool. Well, I guess now your attention so, shifts to Hood River, right? When it, that's on um, this yeah. weekend or next that's weekend. This, or this week. next weekend. I, I hope it's not this weekend. Next weekend. It'd be really yeah. fast. Next weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I've been to, I, I've foiled Hood River once. I've been there a bunch, but um, I've done one downwinder. It was like a really light Viento run. Mm -hmm. um prone 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 foil i was on somebody's like kite board they towed oh, me yeah. up epic and just went so i have a little bit of experience out there but i'm still pretty fresh yeah the river. it's um, um so the, i'm so excited to get it good yeah well fingers crossed you get good good conditions because it does um certainly um come alive <laughs> When, when the wind and current, yeah. you know, are against each other and gets, gets massive. But then on the light days, it can be really light. Yeah. It can be flat. It seems, <laughs> yeah. it seems all or nothing over there. Yeah. Um, I guess who, I guess, I guess you're the one to beat since you just won Maui to Molokai. Who else is going and who um, or, or what equipment do you think is going to work best over there? Who, who are you? Um, okay. I'm really, so of course, a lot of the same people from M2M are going to be there. Um, I think Eric's going to be there and Jack's going to be there and he's going to be there. Um, but I'm really excited to race Dave. Um, I've never had a good race against him before. Yeah. So that'll be really exciting. And he knows the gorge well, and uh, hopefully I can learn a few things. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy Riggs is going. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to go for a race with him. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, all the, everyone, everyone from the gorge too. Yeah. Um, that whole crew is going. The local crew, yeah. It'll be really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the Spencers are going, but they're winging it. Yeah. Yeah. Last year I saw um, them. I'm not it. sure. I'm not sure about Kai or Zane. Um, but it'd be cool to have more subfoilers. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm. Um... Yeah. I, but I think it's like only a year or two before we have like, you know, not as many as wing foilers, but have as many, yeah. like, you know, 20 to 30 sub foilers in each race. Um, I feel like mm -hmm. COVID sort of stopped the racing a lot. And totally. so the sub foil, um, it, it allowed everyone to sort of progress to a point that now um, if the races are established and, get good reviews and get good go. conditions then there's going to be a good race. Yeah. yeah and now the the foils and the boards are getting good enough that it's so much more accessible yeah people learn so much faster yeah that there's yeah i'm really excited yeah big time last time i was in hood river um i was there with a Mal go foil maliko like the original wow. not, not even the maliko 200 yeah. the either size yeah. maliko and i did a couple runs on that and it was epic um yeah a bit light at the start of the viento run but mm -hmm. the middle section was crazy good um and i finished yeah. on the um the washington side actually from memory okay, wow because the finish is kind of shitty um <laughs> uh, you get it gets there's like a is, is there an island there yeah or the island point? yeah the island yeah. stops the wind a lot and yeah on the Maliko, the for me, it was hard work. So I actually started mm -hmm. under the, it's like a railway 
Um, okay. You sort of go under the bridge, like under the. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, that's where I did my first run there. Um, I did, I think I did one Sick. like Viento run, but finished in the sort of salmon river or probably butchering yeah. the names, <laughs> but it's, um, that was back in like 2018, I think, or 2019. Mm -hmm. And Bullet Obra was the only one foiling. I took Zane, I, I took um, Lincoln, okay. Lincoln Jews with me for a sup down window just around the hatchery. And he got, he broke yeah. his, he broke his paddle, he broke my paddle on my foil. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, paddling <laughs> up. Um, yeah. But I'm, it, yeah, I, I need to learn the line. I know the bumps there are a lot different. Yeah. And um, from, I'm so used from sup racing it, the line makes a huge difference um, because the current yeah. and the where the bumps stand up and the depth and all yeah. those things. So I, I don't, I'm not going to pretend I know, but I know that it makes a big <laughs> difference because Dant and Fiona, when I've raced it last, they just knew it like the back of their hand. So mm -hmm. I'd try to get, get a few runs with Fiona Wild if you're over there and just follow her. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, like it, the ocean bumps, you know, you have your long ground swell and your local swell. And I have a lot of training on like working with those two kind of bumps and finding the path between or over mm -hmm. and the rhythm of that, of, of the ocean. And I think the river is a bit different. And so it'll take some time and experience to learn the fastest line through those bumps. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to talk, like, why don't we finish on that? Do you want to talk us through, like, that? what you just spoke about then, the, the, the two different bumps and the lines you take to get up and over or cut through? Do you want to just, like, yeah. quickly, because I think a lot of people will be interested in that, without giving away totally. all your secrets. <laughs> and it's, uh, for me, it's all about energy. It's all about energy. Energy management, your a height is your energy, so either height, how high you are on the wave, how high you are on your mast, and how high you're standing up. So those are your, your three factors for gravitational energy mm -hmm. and then your speed, your kinetic energy. Right. And so I, it's, it, it's all about timing when to store energy and when to use energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And what the most efficient way to use that energy is. Um, so I kind of alternate between you know, if, if I, if I'm just on a normal bump, I'm turning, I'm, I'm standing up straight. I'm high on the bump. I'm storing energy until I see an opening kind of a gap between two bumps where I can thread my foil yeah. and jump one ahead. And so yeah. I'll use that energy and that height to, to skip one or two bumps ahead yeah. or to launch me onto one of those bigger swells. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool. And coming off those big swells is just important as, as getting on them. You know, you come off those big swells with so much speed and so much energy. And it's really easy to relax and waste that. And uh, I try and I try not to use that energy to, to give me time and to slow down. I try and use that to immediately get me into another big good one. bump. Yeah. Big one. But yeah. a lot of it is looking for that. There's this little moment as soon as you get on a bump where you can spot a way. It's almost a gap between bumps where yep. you can thread your way through it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is, is looking for that and making sure you have enough energy to spend to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you've explained um, that really well because I know exactly. I, I know I'm doing the same thing. You know, we're doing the same thing, different oceans but or different yeah. parts of the Pacific anyway, but um, threading yeah. the needle and. Um, Obviously, Malika run, you got lots, lots of practice doing that where it's fast totally. and staying yeah. fast. And from my experience, foiling with Dave Kalama, he's the king mm -hmm. at holding that top totally. end. He just, once he's quick, he doesn't stop. He just holds it. And yeah. he, like you, I think you explained it really well there. Once you have it's speed, don't relax, like stay yeah. tuned in. That's the most important part. Because if you can stay with that one and move on to another one, you're going to hold that speed for even longer. Yeah. What happens a lot. And I and see so it. At yeah. When you're on that, when you're on that big energy going fast, every bump you pass is a couple seconds gained. Yes. Right. It yes. takes a lot of energy and a lot of time for them to, for someone else to skip ahead. Mm -hmm. So any bump, if you skip one bump ahead of somebody, mm -hmm. you have a huge advantage. Massive. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and what I see a lot of people talking about is maximum speed and they get really mm -hmm. caught up on max speed. And, and usually what mm -hmm. happens, especially when you're learning your maximum speed will usually follow like your slower speed. And yeah. what you have to try to do is they have the best average speed and holding onto those big totally. bumps for a long time and connecting it onto yeah. another big bump for a long time is going yeah. to lift that. So I prefer to be going, you know, 20 miles an hour for 20 seconds, mm -hmm. then hit 25 miles per hour for one second is totally kind of what I'm, yeah. And that's, that's the trick totally. for racing downwind anyway. And this is where we get a bit, it's like surfing. They want to learn the max speed because it's that one moment. Whereas when you're covering yeah. a long distance, it's the average speed that we want to, um, and, uh, you know, all of the, this racing technique, it applies to non-racing as well, because if you use that same technique, uh, you can save a lot of energy. Yeah. What, what, what these techniques do is, is save you as much energy and go as fast as possible yeah. so that when you do pump, it gives you even more of an advantage. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause so you're exactly I, right. Sometimes yeah. pumping, you'll pump yourself into a worse position than you go slower. So it's pumping the right yeah. way in the right direction at the right time will give you more speed. So, pumping the wrong time, wrong direction gives you less speed. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of my advancement, my technique and my line has come from not pumping, trying yes. not to pump. Yeah. I'll go with the group and I'll say, okay, I'm not, I'm going to go as slow as I can and I'm not going to pump. Yeah. Or I'm just going to be as efficient as possible. And, uh, you learn all these new lines and tricks and ways to save your energy. Yeah. Um, one interesting one I was talking to Julian about is, is the squat. I call it the squat boost uh -huh. because your, you know, your foil has a glide ratio, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so height is distance, right? Mm -hmm. More height means you can glide farther. Yeah. Right. And what I do is, you know, you only, if you're on a 70 centimeter mast, you have 70 centimeters of glide, let's say. Yeah. But if I use that 70 centimeters and then squat and pull the board up to me, mm -hmm. I have another 70 centimeters of glide. Yeah, so so is I that can like double that. Talking about pulling your knees up towards your chest. Yeah. Yeah. And getting really low and staying low until you have more energy. Yeah. To stand up again. Yeah. So I've been, it takes a lot of energy to do that. So I don't do it on the, the long downwinders, but yeah. for like uh, Maliko records, I'll use it, for example, to skip over a bump. It'll, it'll save me a couple pumps, skipping one forward. Yeah. Or I can get an extra speed boost dropping into a wave that I can use to get somewhere I want to. Yeah. It's like you're using extra weight to, to push down that, that, that totally. bump. Yeah. I've seen um, Perth. Yeah. Perth Stanley through that he gets a massive bump and then he just squats down he's almost ass on his board and you fly moving yeah. so fast and, and the trick the trick is not to stand back up until you're in energy in more in energy again uh-huh yeah right because if you if you squat down you get your speed and then you, you stand back up then you're losing that energy you just gained yeah yeah so you gotta stay down until you're in another bump and then stand back up yeah no I like so it I I've been using yeah. I have to try that yeah. one. Anyways, I've been using that as a way to store like a, a bigger energy bank, I guess. Yes. That's a good way to you explain know. it. Like storing energy, you know, like storing energy and then um, like using that at the opportune moment to then up and over one or cut through one or, or maybe just stay behind one. And it's yeah, yeah holding onto it until you need um, it or to progress yourself. Yeah. Further. There's a really good video of, uh, Scotty foil wizard on Instagram, mm -hmm. just getting into a huge bump and walking into this super low line, low squat yeah. and just flying. And that inspired me to try it out and ended up in this technique. Very cool. I'll have to give it a go. And it, it works. Yeah. I'll, um, I want to talk video. to you about, I know you've been using the axis 1300 a bit for downwind runs yeah. on the Maliko run. And you are saying it like, you got to go crazy fast. Like I can't even fathom how you're going that speed. <laughs> I, I used it the other day and I was doing like four minute kilometers, which is like, it's like 16 yeah. Ks an hour, super slow. Like <laughs> so the range in it, it's got a crazy, crazy high aspect. It's an older foil that's kind of um, coming yeah. back into ahead of its time, fashion. I guess. Yeah. Coming back into fashion. Yeah. Um, you're trying to do 
a seated Malika run on the 1300. Well, you were at the time I spoke to you. you yeah. Were, um, so talk yeah. us through that and how you're going. A seated Malika runs hard uh, because you can't pump. Yeah. So you can't, you, your energy, your, again, your energy bank is really mm -hmm. small. Yeah. It's only the height of the mast and the speed you carry. Um, and you can't really supplement that in any way. Mm. So I feel like it's the ultimate test of the line I take downwind. Yeah. Is to do a seated run. Definitely. And it's not super successful. <laughs> I've had 10 minutes maybe of glide, which That's is pretty good. impressive. Yeah. But far from a full Malika. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's still. One day I'll get there. Yeah. And are you using the big foil for a reason? Like actively trying to use the larger foil, slower foil for? Yeah. The, the larger foil gives me, uh, I, I can go really slow and I feel like I can ride these the smallest of little bumps. Yeah. Um, so where my small foil, I can stay fast for a long time, but I will need to pump eventually. This yep. big foil, you slow down and it just carries you and carries you and carries you. Gives you more time um, to so find another worked. bump. Yeah. It also lets me paddle up without a paddle, without a, you know, a paddle. Gotcha. Just prone. Yeah. Um, Ethics. So um, that was nice. That's something I always preach to my students, like my, my club members, that a slow yeah. foil is a really good way to learn for, for two reasons. Um, one, you're going to paddle up really easily. And that's yeah. obviously the most important thing. But the second thing is it teaches you these rules of how to store energy. And mm -hmm. there's way more like little bumps are going to pick you up earlier. So there's more bumps that are going to yeah. give you more speed. Whereas when, if you're using a fast foil, it's harder to get up. Yeah. Once you're up, you need there's less really options. Big, less options. Exactly. So a bigger foil, more options. And the third option, yeah. the third, uh, I guess, the benefit of using the larger foils is your run goes for longer, <laughs> which, you know, because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you're going slower. So you've got more time on yeah. that foil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, how I got that 1300 going fast is just uh, really in insane conditions. Yeah. Is a lot of it. Like one of the, some of the best conditions I've ever seen. And uh, also just, yeah, super high on the mass. Yeah. To stay on the big ones, you've got to be in like the top three inches of the mast. Terrifying. And just barely <laughs> hanging on. It's terrifying. Um, but it works. And same thing with the, 1099 when I tried it. Yeah. It's really easy to keep up. And to go fast, I had to be super, super high on the mast. Yeah. Just as little in the water as possible. Yeah. That's but sure. um it's surprising. It's surprising what you can make work. Yeah. Um to me, the speeds you got going on the 1300 was more. I've only used it twice downwind. I've used it more in the flat water to sort yeah. of work on my flat water starts. But um yeah it's like it's confusing yeah like uh, the conditions i had were really bad for the downwinder i used yeah. it and that's why i used it it was almost flat and then the winds died and yeah. then it became a headwind but i was doing like four minute kilometers which is like almost a minute slower than i would normally go on yeah. like a 1099 for example like for, for, i went faster my average speed yeah. for my 213 kilometer foil my average pace was faster yeah. than what I did on the 1300, <laughs> 81 <laughs> kilometer. So it was, um, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I still have, I'm skeptical about that, that, that run and the yeah. results, but I had my fastest sections ever on the 1300, wow. <laughs> like minute 45, minute 45 kilometers, which is yeah. 30, yeah. 33 mile an hour top speed. Like really hard to believe. Yeah. So yeah, I guess, and that's pull it up. that's why we discussed the um, you know, conditions, <laughs> and then the foil on the conditions, and then why it's so hard to 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 trust. Um, like if you're oh, on yeah. if you're on your foil for the same conditions, surely you would have been going a fair bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, but like I'm looking at the track now, and like regularly hitting 25 miles an hour. Wow. Which yeah. is I don't know what that is in kilometers an hour. That's that's getting but, right. That's like towards forty, which is yeah, ri ridiculous for that foil. Um, something something was weird that day. Yeah.
Yeah, it's 25 is um, 40, over 40 Ks an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And same day, like two hours later on the 1099, my total, my average pace was faster, but um, it was a slower, slower sections slightly. Yeah. Wow. Which I you know would have never, happened. I've left to, I'll have to use the, I've got the 1300 and the 1099 with me. I'm, I'm actually just up in, um, yeah. just south of Cairns for doing a 45 kilometer race the same time you're doing Hood River. Um, yeah. that will be. Well, my advice is as much as you don't want to do it, wait for the best day ever and take <laughs> it out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And just, just hold, ha hang on. Hang on. No <laughs> pumping. <laughs> just hang on. Yeah. And uh, see how fast you can go. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to give it a try. I'm going to do some runs with some of the crew that have um, driven up or flown up for the race. So um, I'll have to. Yeah especially um, some of the crew are still sort of learning and haven't done a successful full run. So it might be a good day to try the 1300 so I can cool. not, not fly off into the distance on a small foil um, yeah. but, but hang with them. Um, hey, Kane, <laughs> thanks so much for your time. Um, I could chat yeah. all day, but I've got some, I've got to get on daddy duty. Same here. Um, <laughs> but um, all right. well, let's, let's try lock in another chat after Hood River because um, I'm... yeah. Really interested to see how you go, first of all, but also um, hopefully you can share some stuff on the, the new foil stuff you got coming. And um, uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. love, I love picking your brain. I'm sure everyone else likes hearing what you have to say as well. So, so thanks for coming on and um, yeah, speak yeah. to you, speak to you soon. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm, I'd be stoked to catch up after Hood River and uh, excited to chat more about, yeah, the new foils when I can. Yeah. No, very hopefully cool. it all goes well yeah hopefully it all is a big tick and you're coming back victorious from hood river <laughs> <laughs> well uh thanks for having me yeah uh, yeah no. always a pleasure to chat oh actually i just remembered what two things one um <laughs> paddle size what what paddle size yeah and height we're using for m2m um and oh um i've been doing shorter head height yep like right right here or so Mm -hmm. paddle and was nothing super special blade uh, size. real stiff shafts yep 90 square inch about yeah yeah nice that's that's been the general um, trend shorter stiffer shaft bigger blade <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the short's nice yeah High a cage. lot of people start long if you can get that short paddle dialed it makes yeah. a difference because it allows you to have a higher cadence without the paddle splashing or whatever yeah. um and then the second question cool. i had the Blue Water Classic on Oahu next weekend, this weekend. Um, oh, are any foilers doing that? I don't know. It's the Molokai to think Oahu um, replacement, I guess. It's Really? Yeah. I think you should do it. Um, you only Maybe I'll one... make a last minute decision. Yeah. <laughs> it worked for you last time. <laughs> it worked for me last time. Yeah. I'll see see if anybody else is doing it. Yeah. No, I'd... I'd... I'd it could be a lot of fun. If, if I was going to, I almost flew over for it. Um, but then I did yeah. the cans race instead, but I'd, I'd love to see a few foilers do it and support the Molokai to Oahu guys. And hopefully next year, both the blue water, that this new blue water yeah. classic and Molokai to Oahu is on. So we get two races plus Mao to Molokai plus the river. It's like a month of downwind. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Well, uh, sounds like we have a lot of, a lot to talk about next time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cheers, mate. All right. Um, Cheers. Speak to you after Hood River. Sounds great. Bye. Bye.